earlier, but we're going to be talking about how to recruit in Facebook groups, what to look for um, in choosing a group, and why it's important that you need to have a business page um, kind of representing you in the groups. So if you're here, welcome. I'm glad you decided to join us. So let's go ahead and get started. I do want to know if you do already have your Facebook page set up, go ahead and give me a thumbs up because that's super important when you're dealing with Facebook groups. Um, otherwise, um, work on getting it up and going. Um, some good things to think about when you're setting up your Facebook page or business page is to make sure that it is representative of your business. You talk a little bit about what it is that you do and your background. Um, pictures are always great as well. You want to make sure that there's some sort of contact information on your group and, um, I'm sorry, on your Facebook business page. And you also want to, um, put some content related to your business. So if you're having a job surge and you need a lot of needs, put those posts on your group. So post post on your page, your job openings, post on your page, um, things going on in your business. Um, if it's a grand opening, that's something you can post. If it's a one year anniversary, that's something you can post. Um, if you're having uh, or expanding your business, that's something you can post or different things going on just in the nurse industry is really important just so that people know that your page is actually active. Um, you can always also post to into your Facebook business page other people's um, articles and um, posts. I would say just make sure that it's it's in line and appropriate for your business because that's kind of like the face, the representative, or I call like the new age yellow pages for your business. So that's where people go to say, hey, what have people said about this business? What do they do? Who are they? How can I get in touch with them? So on and so forth. So you wanna make sure that it's up to date and active. Um, I know on my Facebook business page, um, they have a lot of great features, which can be nice and annoying at the same time. Um, but one of the features that I like is the fact that there is a prompting, at least on the inboxes, where if somebody inbox you about something and you answer the question, in a couple of weeks, they may in, um, send a message to the person again to say, hey, we haven't heard from you in a while. We just want to do, we just want to know, is there anything we can do for you? like that or even just setting up the um auto response on your messages hey thank you for contacting us however you fill in the blank someone will get back with you in 24 hours or what have you so those little things are important and it's not something that you actually have to um manage you just kind of have to click that box um on your messaging or however you set up your page so that it's kind of doing some of the work for you. So that's always helpful. So let's talk groups. So of course you guys know that I love groups. I have a group um, and groups have been very beneficial in uh, marketing our business as well as actually marketing the group for me. And it has a, it's a great, great resource for um, new and upcoming healthcare staffing agencies, and it is a seamless process. So you just kind of have to get yourself into a rhythm or get yourself into a system of doing it, and you'll start to see a lot of good responses and feedbacks by being a part of a group. So what to look for in a group? I suggest people look for groups and I shared some of the groups in the actual events, some of my favorite groups, and not to say that there aren't more because there are literally hundreds of nurse, therapy, CNA, LPN, med tech types of groups out there. So there's pretty much something for everybody. But some of the things as a healthcare agency I would look for is make sure that you're looking for a group that's representative of what you're trying to recruit for. And that would be something that's in your region. So there are Virginia travel nurse groups. There are Del Marva or DMV, which is a DC, Maryland, Virginia area groups. Um, so if you're only recruiting in one state or a region, you wanna make sure that you're identifying that group that meets that specific area. You also wanna think about if you're recruiting for a specialty like a rehab or med surge or ICU or L&D or post-op or OR, that you also look into being a part of those specific groups. Um, 
And then finally, if you're only doing um, groups that are title specific, like if you're only recruiting for CNAs, if you're only recruiting for LPNs or RNs, then you also want to look for those groups. And you can always mix and match it up um, to your, you know, to tailor it to your needs. But you don't want to join a whole bunch of groups because the more groups you join, the more traffic you come, and then you kind of go from it being an actual recruitment strategy to just keeping up with comments. So, and I'll talk a little bit at the end of the video about comments. Um, and then finally, you would think about status. So, are you recruiting per diem, contracts, travel? Are you doing all three? Are you just doing per diem? Are you just doing contracts? And there are a lot of groups out there that are that specific. So, the healthcare groups are really that specific. They're by title, region, state, um, specialty, and status. Um, so, as... Um, Time goes on, you want to make sure as you start that process, you definitely want to make sure that you're thinking about that. And then you have some of your really large groups. And when I say large, I mean tens and thousands of people. And that would be the ones that come off the top of my head are like your gypsy travel nurse groups, your gypsy travel nurse for LPNs, your gypsy travel nurse for RNs. Um, those are a lot of your bigger groups. Some of the... Um, Larger healthcare agencies have groups as well. In many instances, those groups can really be um, pretty large with over a thousand members. But what works best for us, um, and maybe you guys can kind of chime in too, is trying to keep up to like one to three or four thousand members. And the reason I say to kind of go a little bit smaller is because you want to be able to actually manage when you post a job. You don't want, because in some of the larger groups, when you post a job, and I'll go ahead and share our experience when we first started, because we like social media. We're like, oh, we can post in the jobs. It's going to be so great. We posted in, um, I want to say it was probably the LPN Gypsy or the CNA one. And within an hour or so of our post, we got 200 comments. And the amount of time we spent trying to catch up with the comments and this was just that day and it was really within hours so as time went on the comments just went up and up and up and me and my partner both agreed oh we're not going to do that again so in some of your smaller groups you'll get a lot of comments but we really don't have the time or the manpower to manage that many comments and you're so right, Jarvis. People are just information hunting. You know, a lot of times they don't even read the actual job ad. And I'll talk a little bit about what you guys need to take into consideration that. So if you're in a group with 10,000 people, and I will side note and say most people are on these Facebook groups early in the morning and early at night around now. Um, they're just interested in um, kind of fishing is the best way that I can put it. So they just want to know what's out there. They they more than likely in some instances could already be in a contract or have no interest in the location, but they want to see, oh, well, how much are they charging in this area? How much is, you know, this type of role going um, in this location or this type of hospital system or this particular city? But they're not necessarily serious. So there's a couple of ways to filter through those who are just fishing and those who are actually serious. And before I share that, I'm going to say when you post, when you join the groups, make sure to read the rules. Don't do yourself a disservice and not read the rules. Every group has them. Some are more strict than others. Some of the group admins are really great about posting the rules at the top of the page or having you ask questions. And for all you guys that joined my group, you did have questions to ask, um, or questions that I asked you. And um, there also may be for some groups, after you answer the questions and you get you know, approved to join the group, then they may have you um, kind of give like a confirmation on the group rules read them in their entirety don't do yourself a disservice because some groups are only set up for employees or people who are looking for jobs they're not set up for recruiters so I wouldn't join that group or some groups might say hey 
this is something that this is a group that recruiters can post in but there are very specific requirements and in some groups if you don't post the job exactly how they say it's supposed to be posted one it won't get posted and then two you'll also might get banned from the group like i think that's a little harsh but um that's you know that's their choice